Three Minute Egg's coverage of the visual arts is supported by Wet Paint, an independent art supply store since 1976, serving Twin Cities artists and the world beyond. Learn more at wetpaintart.com. In this Three Minute Egg Gallery Hop, we take you to form and content where we meet Camille Gage, who was first known to local audiences as a rock and roll singer and then took on visual art while she incorporates both those worlds into her new exhibition, Calling All Angels. And then we step over to Fox Tax Gallery where we meet Rob McBroom, who calls on pop culture references from all across the map, obscure and otherwise. Two exhibitions, two artists on this edition of Three Minute Egg. after this life, uh, since my mom passed away when I was young. It's uh, formed the core, really, of a lot of my creative endeavors, and uh, I wanted to uh, address that topic. I've done it in some more abstract paintings, but I wanted to address it in a more direct way. I've never worked with feathers <laughs> before, <laughs> that's for sure. Uh, though I have used the icon of the feather in paintings a lot, so I see the, the feather as kind of a metaphor for the soul. I knew that the, the three pieces that I, the three main pieces I did for the show, uh, the robe for Judith, the interactive piece, which is the title piece, Calling All Angels, and the music piece were physically not going to take up much space. And so I wanted to have some other work that might complement what I was doing. And I learned of the work of Anders Nilsson and David Everett uh, by asking friends and also uh, through mnartist.org. I desperately wanted to start making music again because that was how I started uh, when I was very young in my teen years and early 20s was as a musician and in bands, a singer-songwriter. I really missed it and wanted to find ways to reintegrate it into my work. I decided to make a soundtrack for an exhibition just like there's soundtrack for movies and that the music and the sounds would inform the work and uh, complement the experience of the viewer when they're in the gallery. Uh, right after high school, I was doing, I was really interested in surrealists, and I was interested in pop art. As time went on, I started putting in things that I was interested in, which was a lot of like nerdcore things like Star Trek and cla like car logos and that kind of thing. I enjoy the graphic design end of things too, and I shouldn't just make it a, really an autobiographical thing. And so... As time went on, I just started incorporating more and more just for the design elements, these logos, because they mean things to other people. It's like, it may not personally mean anything to me, like, there's a painting over here that has Harvard and like, the City of Brooklyn Center's logo, and it's a lot of really local specific, and then because of the internet, that just blasted everything open, and you get a, all these things that has no real relevance to most people's lives here in the U.S., but it's in the broader context of a worldview. And so I think of it as a kind of uniquely American art, just because we peddle so much influence everywhere. This is a continuous story. This was, uh, this was Edward Lear's uh, po nonsense poem from back then. I'm a big believer in the random world, where things just happen simply by coincidence, and it happens a, a lot. And I don't know if it's just because you know, we just live in that such a pop culture centered world. But there is no real reason other than where it, it, it fits in design wise.